Okay, boys and girls, my name is Mike Kelly from animatorsforum.com as well as the Real Illusion forums. Um, this is an interesting, I don't even know what to call this. That's not really a tutorial. It's an expl exploration or showing my workflow off. I have, uh, this is the uh, New York um, stores. If I go to, <laughs> I don't have Daz open. So let me open up Daz while it's coming in here. And <laughs> I always get an error when I open up Daz for some reason. I've uh, I've tried to follow the uh, explanations as to how to get rid of that error, and I, it never goes away like that, that error. So, anyway, uh, New York stores. So I had this uh, set that I got, New York stores, which is kind of cool. I bought this recently because I uh, I have the New York apartments, and so I kind of wanted to have this this store thing. So, um, so I thought, well, I would bring it in to um, iClone because that's what I do. I use all this stuff in iClone. It's a very large set. So I tried to take this set here. I should bring this over here. Um, so it's got all these these four different components, these four stores. Uh, and it wouldn't work. It was too big to go through Exchange because, as we all know, Exchange is a 32-bit program. So I had to do it one, one store at a time, which is okay. I went through and basically, I, I like say, if I wanted store three, I would delete, uh, you know, these stores, I did it once in time and, and end up with store three. The other thing I did is I unparented it. I don't know that I needed to, but I did unparent it and get rid of this uh, overall arcing thing, but I did that. So I had this, and then I went to export it. Go ahead and go to file and export. And I export it as an OBJ. And we've talked about this in some of my other tutorials. If you export this as an FBX, uh, then you can't go in later on and and make sub props out of it. It doesn't allow you. FBX is really good for characters and for things that have animation in them, but otherwise OBJ is your absolute best bet if you ever need to make sub props. So anyway, I did that and I brought it in. So that way you can take each one of these, like these doors, and make them into sub props. If you do it as FBX, you can't. So so I definitely wanted it as as so I can make sub props. So I brought it in here. And then I applied it to iClone, each each piece one at a time. And because I, I'm sorry, that's not iClone. Uh, and then, and because I left them where they were, I didn't move them in Exchange. They all came in perfectly into iClone. Okay, so far really straightforward. Now the problem is when you uh, when you go OBJ or actually even FBX at times, uh, you don't always get all the materials. And in this particular case, I've I've talked about this before in the past. I'm going to select this store here. You'll notice that if I go to some of these, let's go to the, some of these where they actually have some materials. My cat doesn't like it when I talk, so she's making noise here going, come on. I know I have some materials here somewhere. Uh, yeah, there we go. I've got a base color. Um, we'll go to awning, base color. But you notice we don't have any, any bump maps. We've got all this stuff. I, I know, for example, that the... Um... All right, stop that. Ah, this cat says... Cat's trying to get my attention. Uh, <laughs> I know that the uh, somewhere in the uh, uh, hi hi Julie hi ah, dear cats. Uh, I love them, but you know they're like women. You can't live with them sometimes. Um, okay. Anyway, you can see there's there's no uh, there's no bump maps here, and everything's linked, which I don't like. It just happens that uh, that iClone brings in links, and and it's actually not really good linking stuff and you can't break the links easily and that's a whole other story so still about my workflow so what i did was and and this i've shown people in the past is i have a, a blender uh routine which brings in the object and then i write out the folders write the iclone folders out and this contains all the maps for uh for all the stuff so i just i just go ahead and do this and i'm not going to do that now because it takes a while not terribly long time but it takes a while and then what it does is it creates this uh this series of folders here that has all the maps in it okay so all all good so there's like the awning material and there it has the bump maps see there and if we go into uh i don't know i'm trying to find some material that may have more than one map here on it uh what does Oh, maybe the leaves. I don't know leaves. Yeah, so it's got opacity map. So there's other things. So so it has it has different maps in it. It found all the maps that belong in there. Road. Oh, there we go. Not the bump maps. Okay. So in any case, uh, all these maps are here, and so it needs to um, 
so it, it has the maps for you. But the problem is, how do you get them loaded in? And it used to be that I would just go ahead and run this routine here, this load all object textures. But either they've changed something in iClone. I think they have. I think they've changed some basics here. But it doesn't work the way it used to. So the good news is we now have that capability to Python it. So instead, now I wrote a little Python routine, and I'm going to go ahead and, and run this. It takes a little bit of time, but when I actually, after I run this, I'm going to, while I'm running it, I'm going to go over here to show you guys the Python routine while it's running. And basically what it does is it goes through the selected object. So I selected that one uh, store. It finds the, um, the mesh names, and for each mesh, it goes through and gets the material names. And then it looks in the material uh, because it knows the material name the material name matches up to this directory name so see that's a shoe material so it would go in and say oh i gotta find this quans whatever this quans is and find the maps there and then here as it finds the maps in this particular case it finds a map that has a normal or bump or whatever then it loads the map in that channel and that's the that's the actual coding to do that. There's not, it's not a very long program. Most Python programs in general aren't very long because they're, it's a very compact language. It can do a lot of things that would take hundreds of lines of code in, in other languages. Still running in the background. It's loading in a lot of maps. So, um, so that's my thing. It's, this isn't the most elegant thing in the world, but at least it uh, loads the materials in. I see I've made some kind of change in this. I'll save that. Um, what am I trying to say? So, so it loads the materials in, and when they're all loaded in, which they will be in a few minutes, we will look at it and see if the maps are in there. It's going, and it's going. It gives me a... What it does is it comes back and says done when it's done. If there's a lot of materials, and there's a lot of materials in here. I mean, think about this. There's... Uh, there's all these materials. Look at, look at these materials. And each of these materials has four maps. So you can imagine, or, or more, uh, so you can imagine how many maps that have to be loaded in to here. And if I had to do this manually, it would just be uh, a nightmare. The other thing I actually have my Python routine do is it goes in, for example, here, go to the properties. This is normally a 4K material. So um, my, my mouse is actually frozen up a little bit because it just means that the iClone routine finished. Uh, so it... I actually reduce that texture down to 1K uh, in Python. You can do that too. So um, so now it's loaded in. So we're done. So we go to modify. We go to well, one of these, hopefully, that has a bump map. There we go. So I loaded the bump maps in. Okay? It also unlinked those textures, which is really good. Uh, I'll talk, I could talk about that at length some other time. But, but anyway, so, so all the bump maps are there. So it's a much improved material. And that's, so that's my workflow. That's what I'm doing. Eventually, what I want to do is take the Python routine in Blender that finds all these maps and identifies them and correctly puts them in and just have it all as part of this one uh, script so that when I, when I run this, um, this git load materials, it'll do everything that Blender does and I won't have to, really have to go to Blender first to do it. And I will do that. It's just, there's just a lot of code I have to port over. Um, might not be too terrible, but... We will see. So that's my workflow. I hope this was at least interesting. Maybe give you some ideas on your own workflow and how to get your own maps and things into, uh, into iClone. Talk to you later.